This meeting is being recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's me, it's me, the K to the Z, known to the world as Z, world's greatest weight loss expert. And I'm hanging with my bricks today. I'm hanging with my beautiful, my gorgeous bricks. I'm hanging out with Lee Money. I'm hanging out with my girl Liz. We hang it in, in, in today. This topic is going to be kind of awesome. And I, I love my girls because my girls always lay it out on the line. They're extremely transparent. And uh, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to give y'all today. Today, we're going to talk about self-sabotage. Self-sabotage. So my first question, and Liz, you can go first. First question, are you guilty? of self-sabotage. Yes. Okay. More so in the past than now, but yes, definitely. Now explain to me the past. How was Liz in the past? Um, more so not being confident in my gifts and abilities, um, self-doubt. So anytime I would take on a task, I would be like, am I good enough for this? And, in, and that in itself leads you to self-sabotage whatever you're going after. Uh, relationships, am I good enough for this person? Or even choosing the same person over and over and over again, knowing that they're not right for you. So Now in the past, were you, were you good for doing what I like to call reruns? Yes. Okay, you were the rerun person to where yeah. even though you've experienced this person and it didn't work out, they come back around and then they act like it's all brand new and you give them another chance. That's you. Or, or even choosing the same, it's a different person, but they had the same spirit and energy hmm. just oh. over and over and over again. Even though you got the red flag, this is the same person you dated six months ago. So yes. Wow. How about you, Lee? <laughs> Are you guilty of self-sabotage? I definitely have been, Coach. I definitely have been. Uh, every now and again, the creep back in, the uh, self-doubt, you know, will, will lead to self-sabotage. So I think it's something that is a work in progress for me. Like I'll tackle one thing and, okay, I, I work myself out of it, but then something else creeps in with the, the weight loss thing for me. Um, I could be doing great with my relationship. Okay. But then I'll self sabotage with my weight loss. I eat this today and then I work out tomorrow, but then I do other things instead of working out. Are you one of those people that will get good at one thing, but then as soon as you turn your head to attempt to do something else, you kind of neglect your main thing? You know, I don't know. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. I have done, I have done stuff like that before. I've noticed okay. that I've done it before. Yeah. Okay. But you know, like I said, it's a work in progress. And then I go back and I'll start working on this. I'll start working on this and I'll get overwhelmed with something else in my life and not pay attention to what I'm doing over here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, look, well let me ask you this. What, what are some things you catch yourself doing in terms of sabotaging yourself? What are some of the, of the common things that as soon as you do it, you're like, dang, I'm doing that again. Grabbing something um, that I know I shouldn't be eating and say, okay, I'm, I'm gonna work out later. I'm gonna do this extra because I know how to get it off. Because uh -huh. I got the tools, you know? And yeah. then I don't do it. Then I go right. back and I, I realize oh, I did that again. Why did I do that? I know better. Or it could be something with a job. You know, like I take freelance jobs sometimes for writing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very good. I know how good I am. And I will let something be on a back burner and not finish it. Like somebody send me a, a request for my resume or writing sample. And mm -hmm. I put it off to the last moment. And I've self-sabotaged myself out of, you know, a quick contract. <laughs> Right. That I could have done if I was on top of things. Gotcha. How about you, Liz? What are some things you catch yourself doing whenever you start 
uh, self-sabotage? Um, ne negative speak. Okay. Sometimes I talk, you know, when you're talking to yourself, your thoughts, a lot of times my thoughts are not positive. And so it'll right. lead me to self-sabotage. Also, I'm um, quick to tell people yes when okay. I need to say no. Like I overextend myself when I know that that is not a part of the plan. When I need to like basically stand up for myself and say, no, I can't do that. I don't have time. Or, and not really have to give an explanation, but definitely self-talk and overextending. And not standing up for myself. How long have you been doing that overextending thing, would you say? Probably oh, all of my life. Oh, you're like, where does that come from? Um, I believe it stems from the expectations that my parents had when I was growing up. Okay. It was always bring home straight A's, be a okay. good girl, be the top of everything that you do. Like there was my older brother that passed, he would always say you were the only one that did that too. I couldn't bring bees home, like literally. I brought a bee home, I got in trouble. So it was mm -hmm. almost like I had to be what they, what I thought they termed as perfect. Okay. And so in that, you overextend because you have to, if you're bringing straight A's home, then everything you do has to be that straight A. Did, and if you get did, that. Did that bleed into other areas of your life to where you felt like it had to be perfect in order for you to do? All areas, all okay. areas. Even now, if I make a mistake, I beat myself up. Like I go to bed and just run it through my mind. What I did, what I could have done right. And that's not, it's not healthy. It's not healthy because it'll, it drives me crazy sometimes. If I make a mistake, it takes me a long time to kind of be able to breathe through. Okay, you made that mistake. Now, let me ask you this. Has self-sabotage talked you out of taking risks because you don't really trust yourself like that? And if so, what areas of life more so than the others have you found that to be true? For me, relationships and owning a flourishing business. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Lee? Um, definitely relationships for a long time. And just working on myself being better. Like I would do things like Liz says, like the, uh, it wasn't so much as bad, you know, self-talk or poor self-talk. It was the thoughts okay. that, you know, kept me from moving forward or, or, or um, finishing. So definitely, definitely. I don't know how I got past it. Like I, I must have gotten past it, but it was a long time. Like I, it's, it's, it's almost paralyzing. And when you allow things to creep into your mind, like, you know what, maybe I'm not ever going to be in a relationship. That's not for me. Hmm. Find a way to live your life differently than with the relationship. So well, I would try to do something less thinking this is what I was really meant to do. Okay. So you almost essentially talk yourself up out of something that you were supposed to have because in a sense, you had given up on that idea of having somebody. But now you're engaged to be married. Right. <laughs> I remember that talk we had, uh, was it a year ago or just over a year ago? Right. You said, start telling yourself you're somebody's wife because you right. are. Remember that. And I, I remember it. I remembered it often. And so what, I remember when this year started, I said in January, I said, I'm getting married this year. I had not even met him. I met him after I said that in January. Wow. <laughs> wow. And not only that, Coach, I wrote it down. I wrote it down that day when we talked. I wrote it down often. Then I wrote down okay. what I wanted. Wow. So, <laughs> so, so people who say you can't manifest your life, what would you say to those folks? That's not true. Right. That's not true. You have the power to do that. Right. Especially if you speak it enough and you write it down and you see it and you believe it and you feel that thing, you can bring that thing to fruition. But 
in between that time, uh, between the point in which you start saying it and it starts manifested, you know, devil will mess with you and start basically causing you to have doubt. Oh, ain't nobody gonna want you. You got, you too old, you too this, you got too many kids, you got this, that, and other. You, you know, you this, that, and other. And then next thing you know, you believe in what, what devil said when that ain't what God said. Right. Because God said you were fearfully and wonderfully made. It was, it was about about four or five months of me writing every day. I'm somebody's wife. It was a part of my prayer, actually. I am mm. somebody's wife. And I just kept it in my mind. I knew it. I knew that I was. I started walking as if I, as if I was. I started telling my people about it, not just my family, but anybody that was, would listen. And write it down, write it down. I started writing down everything and saying wow. it out loud. That's awesome. Liz, well, let me ask you this, Liz, because you've been working on, you've been very, very intentional about working on your life. How has working on your life actually changed your life since you've acknowledged, you know what, I need to stop being so hard on myself. I need to stop people pleasing. I need to start looking out for me. I need to start working on me. So now I'm at the, I'm, I'm kind of at a standstill, just to be honest and transparent. Okay. I think I'm at the part where I need that extra push or that that extra help, you know, in our community, we don't talk about that. But you know, somebody to kind of guide me because it's like, I realized what I was doing. Okay. So I get to the next step. What do I, what exercises do I need to do to push me into the, okay, so we're past that. Now we're kind of at this impasse. Okay. Like, I go to the next level. In terms of what area of life would you say? All of them. All, All of them. I feel I feel extremely stagnant right now. Extremely stagnant. So. Okay. So okay. what do you feel like? So what do you feel like you need to do? Because that's one thing about us. We'll know what we need to do, but sometimes we gotta say what we need to do. What do you feel like you need to do to get unstuck? I don't know. I don't know. That that's part of my frustration. Normally okay. I have a plan. When I okay. bought my house, I had a plan. Okay. When my mom passed and I was determined to get my degree. I was 30 something. I had a plan. You're gonna get your okay. degree, you're gonna save your money, you're gonna get your credit score up, you're gonna move out, stay in an apartment for a year, you're gonna have your house. Everything played out. Okay. And now I don't have that plan because I don't know what I need to do. Now watch how fast we come up with a plan. Give me an area of your life you want to get better at. Watch how fast we do this. What I want to really, I really want to find um create a business that flourish, flourishes. Not okay. just one where it's just like, okay, here, or there. I want to create a business that flourishes. In what area? I don't know yet. Okay. I mean, I definitely, I want to get back into the love collection. I want to get back into doing that, but I want it to be like legit. I want to feel like, I want to, I'm sorry, go ahead. Legit as in what? And okay, but you say, when you say legit, you just, the lid of, you, you basically, Put poo poo on it. You deal it. Yes. yes. But this is what I shoot you down. You have made how many sales? Just you can ballpark it. How many sales have you made with your delegitimate <laughs> business? Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not. Oh, I'm I'm not sure. You might be perfect. Yeah. I ball. I ballpark it. Five hundred. Lee, does that sound legitimate to you, Lee? Yes, it does. And I'm ready to sign up for whatever I need to do so I can get whatever she's selling. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. See, and that's what we do. We okay. Moving forward, we have to stop stop making stuff so so small just because we're doing it. Right. That's that that is that is part of the self-sabotage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you have to legitimize your, yourself because Lee had already said, okay, 
uh, shoot, I hop on, I guess, get something. And then, you know, I've already got something from you. So it's kind of like if you got people supporting you, the only person that's missing from your support system is you supporting you. Yes. And I, I am there. I'm there. It's, and, and so, I don't know. I'm, I, like I said, I'm at a standstill on how to push to the next level. I mean, I, I really am. Can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Do you feel like your feelings fail you? My what? Your feelings fail you? In terms of what you just, kind of like what you just said. A lot of people will, will you know, will, will have loved to have sold 500 units of anything. Okay, but to you, it's small, it's insignificant. But that's how, but that's how you feel. But that's not how it is on paper, because that's right. that's impressive. Right, and I don't think it's. I don't feel that it's small. I feel that it's. I think it's amazing. But there was a point where I wanted to grow and move and then health issues. And so now the business is in a crate. Okay. So, so the smallness is not in the capability or the, the, um, the business itself, but in me getting started again, because I kind of had to put everything on hold for okay. this other stuff that was going on. So now I'm like, set, set up your workstation, get started. Yeah. And I haven't. Because could you do like a little small launch, even for 20, 30, 40, 50 people? Couldn't you do that? I could. Like, I, could I could go full blast if I opened up the crate and set my workstation back up. But damn it, open the crate. <laughs> <laughs> Die. I mean, but that's what we talked about, right? Self-sabotage. It's like, yeah, get out, get out your way, cuz. You open yeah. out your, you like, all I got to do is really open the crate. Well, open the crate. Yeah. Open the crate. <laughs> Everything's packed up. Everything. It's like I just put it, pushed it to the side. Yeah. Okay. Which leads me to my last question about being a, a blessing blocker. Mm. What advice would you give to a person who feels like and they know that they're blocking their blessings? What advice would you give somebody who struggles with that? Struggles with pressing past themselves. Lee, you go ahead and start us off. Okay. Um, get out of your own way. And bigger than that, make a plan to get out of your own way. Mm. And start by just say, I'm going to do the first part of the plan. Okay. And if you can get those first few steps out of the way, then you can move on to the next part. And a lot of times people like Liz or me, somebody, somebody that likes to, uh, who has a bigger standard for their, themselves and their other parts of their life or who have lived their lives and lived by a certain standard right. and put themselves first for most of their life. In every right. other area in their life, they're doing things right. But when it comes to something that they really want and they really deserve, they put themselves on the back burner. But I remember when I was in college, I had a plan and I did it without hesitation. Mm -hmm. And I remember raising my kid. I did that stuff intentionally. Right. So make sure you have a plan and follow through. Just and celebrate the small victories. Yes. Don't forget to celebrate those. Yes. And I, and I love how basically you framed it up as basically graduate to the next step. Graduate to the next level. Identify this step here. Once you conquer that, then you move to the next one. I love it. How about you, how about you, Liz? I would say being a blessing block of myself. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sometimes I have to take a moment and recognize the blessings that are already happening or have happened. Because when you start blocking your blessings, it's because you feel negative about something. Mm -hmm. It's like, you you know, something negative is going on and so you don't see the good things. So sometimes I have to stop and recognize the good stuff, not look for anybody else to, to point it out, just know 
these these are my blessings. So if he did this, yes. the rest is coming. The rest is coming. That's on. good. So, <laughs> so, so that's, do you feel like sometimes you just need to step back a little bit maybe? Oh, definitely. Okay. Definitely. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, ladies, thank y'all so much for blessing the world with your stories. Uh, again, y'all are awesome and y'all are incredible. Look, we're going to do it again next week because I love doing it and people love watching it. And I love, uh, and, and you know, we've all been together for a very long time. And it's just beautiful just to watch, you know, everybody grow together as a family. So we're going to get Liz to unpacking her, her crate and setting stuff up right quick. But uh, for the people who watch it all over the world, thank y'all so much and thank y'all for hanging and we'll be back next week and uh again we're here to bless you so stop self-sabotaging get out of your own way and let's move forward thank have you have a great one you thank too you. bye y'all thank y'all